What if you stopped treating servers, network, and storage like they were separate things and instead simplified them by using them as an integrated system in a vBlock? And that vBlock had the capability to abstract all of the capabilities into services, in effect a pool of pools, and that pool of pools became dynamic, making service offering provisioning a single click action instead of provisioning individual parts of hardware. And ultimately, all of that was consumed in a self-service fashion via an end user portal. Well, let's show you that. Step one, let's simplify. Let's turn servers, network, and storage into integrated infrastructure. So EMC Ionix Unified Infrastructure Manager is currently shipping in version one. This is a preview of some things to come in version two. In version two, you can see that we've got a simple and easy to use dashboard. This infrastructure portal is inherently multi-tenant. So if you have multiple V blocks, you can subdivide them into different uh, user space. And it gives you simple visibility across all of your V blocks of capacity, uh, both from blade and from a storage standpoint. So all of the pooled resources, even their tier. You can group them also in this widget by their tier itself. So for example, you can see uh, this is the three tiers of storage that I've got. And these are the uh, blades. And you'll see later on uh, this idea of tiering of the grade of blade. Um, and the pool capacity idea extends also, of course, to the networking attributes, worldwide names, Mac, UUIDs, all of these attributes, how, much, how many are free and how many are used. A critical idea is that we're moving away from the idea of managing individual elements and we can discover the entire V block all at once. As we go through this process, EMC Ionics UIM, or Unified Infrastructure Manager, will discover all of the storage elements and assets that are available, all of the networking assets that are available, and add new blades to the blade pool and new storage capacity to the storage pool. If we do a quick refresh, you can see that two new blades have been discovered and we can easily assign them a grade. What's this idea of a grade? Well, the idea of a grade is that some blades may have higher memory density or different capabilities on the uh, mezzanine uh, interfaces and uh, may be used for different services or different oversubscription ratios. And likewise, the same idea exists on the storage side. Whether it's virtually provisioned, whether it's thick provisioned, uh, depending on the tier, maybe it's even an auto tiering grade. You can define these. In this case, we've defined three grades. This will become an important idea later. You can see that this has dramatically simplified things. And going back to our dashboard, it's possible now to manage multiple V blocks as if they were a single pool of capacity. Here, we're looking at the blade capacity and the storage capacity on the V block that has recently just been added. Now that we've simplified, the next step, step two, is to abstract things. Turn those hardware elements into service offerings. Make the V-block and multiple V-blocks a pool of pools. So if we go back to this uh, EMC Ionics Unified Infrastructure Manager, and let's take a look at how easy it is to create a service offering. So if we navigate down to the service offering tab and say add, it's as simple as giving it a new name and then starting to define the characteristics of the elements of that service. So for example, let's uh, give this new service offering a name, which we'll call a demo offering. And you'll notice that it has the ability, EMC Ionix uh, Unified Infrastructure Manager, to uh, preload onto individual uh, uh, hosts as they get added a specific build. Here we're adding vSphere 4 automatically. Then what we're going to do is we're going to specify sets of servers that are going to be used, so compute resources. We're going to specify a grade, a minimum, and a maximum, and this becomes an elastic pool. As more is required, it can easily be expanded. And in fact, you could have multiple servers of different grades as part of that service, or you could just have it all be as one. Um, so if we move on to the storage tab, the same idea exists there. A key thing to consider is that we're no longer telling EMC Ionix UIM what blade to configure or what storage to configure, but instead only the amount that's going to be used out of a given pool. So uh, here, for example, we're going to say uh, that this entire service is going to use up to a terabyte of storage, and we're going to specify um, that we're going to have a series of boot LUNs, so each one of these vSphere hosts is going to uh, be running ESX in this case, and they're going to need a boot LUN to boot off of. Uh, so we just configured 50 of them, and now we're going to create a shared data store that's going to be used as uh, the underlying um, VMFS shared data store for the virtual machines that will be created later. So again, notice we didn't say where it's going to be or, or um, exactly how it's configured. We're now to the point where we're creating um, uh, 
service offerings out of pools of pools. And as you notice, the same idea extends to the networking idea. Now that we've created that demo offering, it's as simple as saying mark available, and it will start to make that available to actually provision. And that's step three, making it very dynamic, single click, simple provisioning of services and no longer any hardware. So if we go to a service offering that we've created, it's as simple as clicking on that uh, service offering and say provision. And now what's occurring is it's going into the pooled set of resources and it's provisioning every element. The servers, so here you can see that an ESX uh, host is being configured. It's reserving the blade out of the blade pool. It's creating the uh, UCS service profile. It's binding the service profile to the blade every single step that normally an administrator would need to do to, by hand over and over again. And it's now uh, finished, almost finished configuring the host. Now if we move along, uh, you'll see that the same thing occurs for all of the other elements that are required to create an infrastructure service. So let's talk about the storage piece. Fast forwarding a little bit, you can see that uh, both uh, the blades are configured and they're of uh, two different tiers. And now it's going through and it's actually configured the underlying storage that was part of the service offering. The storage is now provisioned. And now let's take a look at what happens on the networking side. So on the networking side, just like with servers and with storage, you see that every single step that was configured as part of the service offering is done completely automatically. And now the OS is properly installed and that service is up and running. The fourth step is self-service, and this is a very important idea. End users want to be able to self-provision their own infrastructure on the infrastructure as a service. So that means there needs to be an end user multi-tenant portal and it has to be very simple and very easy to use. At EMC World, we demonstrated on stage this idea of an end user self-service multi-tenant portal using future technology coming from VMware codename Project Redwood. It's been removed here at VMware's request, but it gives you an idea of where VMware and EMC are collaborating to provide this top layer of the stack that consumes the physical resources of vBlock orchestrated by EMC Ionics UIM. So what did we see? We saw simplification. Server, network, and storage became common integrated infrastructure. We saw abstraction. One or more vBlocks became a multi-tenant pool of pools that subsequently could be dynamically provisioned. And we didn't provision hardware, we provisioned services with a single click. And those services were consumed by the higher level capabilities of VMware. EMC Ionics Unified Infrastructure Manager and VMware Project Redwood are aligned ideas. One is an infrastructure portal for the infrastructure administrator, and one is a self-service end user portal focused on the end user. And together, along with a vBlock, you have cloud infrastructure, infrastructure as a service in a box.